is kind of weird. It's a weird backdrop. My knees are exposed. Show them knees. Can you see my head? I feel like this is a strange, strange setup. How are you guys doing? Joe here. I was going to do this outside. It snowed like crazy last night. All day yesterday it's snowing right now. I'd rather do this somewhere dry. I can't have a fire. Can't camp on Crown Land. I can't camp on um, in parks. This is what we're doing. I thought I would Im uh, impart some knowledge that was imparted onto me about six or seven years ago by one of my mentors, Terry Barney, Iowa Woodsman. I want to get this out of, out of the way right away. I did not come up with this. He did not come up with this. This is where I learned it from, from him. Check out Iowa Woodsman, IA Woodsman on YouTube. Awesome dude, uh, very knowledgeable. So today what we're gonna do, we're all in the quarantine, we're all bored, we're sitting at home, let's learn something, okay? This is something that I thought was super cool back in the day when I learned it. It's a cheap way to make a bush pot, a cook pot, camping, whatever you wanna call it, with a lid and a bale ready to go for super cheap. This is how this Sierra cup comes. If you wanna call this a Sierra cup, a nesting cup, I don't know, but it's this one that you guys have seen forever at Walmart, at Canadian Tire, at Dick's Sporting Goods, at Menards, on Amazon, whatever, they're like 10 bucks. They're stainless steel. You can see this one's been used forever. It's been uh, steel wool, Brillo pad, SOS padded up, cleaned up, but still got its scars from, from uh, use and I love it like that. So <clears throat> we're gonna learn today how to make a bale, how to make a lid, and how to set this up as your cook pot. Now, a Nalgene nests, I should have grabbed my Nalgene, a Nalgene nests right inside here, a normal Nalgene, right? So that's, that's a bonus for it. And then you can get the little pouches that fit on the side of like Hidden Woodsman or like uh, Max Edition backpacks and stuff, and they, they have those little bottle pouches and they fit perfectly. So you can put this right in the bottom of the pouch, this in the, above it, the Nalgene on top, and you're ready to rock. So, again, you can pick these up anywhere, and a cool trick with these, not sure if everyone knows, but these handles do come off. You just prime open a little bit, and they come off. Super slick. Super easy to do it, right? Nice and easy. Now you have your pot. It's a good size. You can cook rice in here. You can cook, uh, you can rehydrate dehydrated foods. You can boil water. You can melt snow. It's obviously for one person. It's not going to last, uh, it's not going to do you too much at once. But definitely for a day hike, for a survival kit, this is on point. Right here I have snare wire. It's not actually snare wire. It's more like craft wire. It's got this green coating on it that will eventually come off when you put it over a fire. It's no big deal. Now the gauge of this, I, I like to use this because it's, in all honesty, this is all I could get. <laughs> but I do like to use it because it's green and it's heavy duty. I bought this when I was going to go on a loan. We could bring snare wire and I couldn't find any and I was like in a panic so I bought as much of this as I could. We all know how that turned out. I didn't need to use any of it. So this is a uh, 22 gauge and they're both 22 gauge. You can use all, all the way from like 22 to 26 gauge probably but 22 is, is on point. Now I'm going to show you a way and again I learned this from Terry that you can cut this without having to mess around with snips or anything like that. Right. So what we want to do originally, because we don't want to waste any, when we try to make something like this, is we want to measure the distance around this cup and then double it, add a little bit, right? Because we're going to do a, two, a twist, we're going to do a two strand twist and make this a lot shorter than it actually is. So to go around this cup once, it's about there, double that, it's about there, we're going to go just a little bit more because we will lose some when we twist it, right? So this is how we're going to cut this wire. Say we, we're in the bush and we don't have anything to cut it with. We don't want to nick our knives or our axes or anything. An axe definitely would work. I would use that over a knife. And you're just going to twist it right around halfway one time. You're going to wrap it around your hand on the other side and hold it tight. And you can wear gloves if you need to if you're worried about it. Watch it's not working now because I'm messing around so much. There we go. And it breaks. Breaks right off, breaks clean, didn't do any anything bad to me or anything. So now we want to straighten it out a little bit. <clears throat> a little bit. Why did I yell that part? We have what will become the start of our bale. So we're gonna fold it in half. So you have one looped end or one folded end and one open end. And the open end, all we're going to do 
is we're going to twist it into like a bite. So we want to fold it over a little bit bigger than that, fold it over and then twist it on itself a bunch of times. All right, so my other camera just died. That's perfect. Twist it on itself a bunch of times. Until you have an eye. You can see that, right? <clears throat> you do want to kind of get it down as tight as possible, just because later on it'll be easier to work with. So if you don't, again, don't have pliers. If you do, just use pliers. If not, you can just work it off the ground or whatever. It's fine. So you have that, and you want to leave it open again. Sorry, not open. You want to come down to the bottom where there's that loop. So you have basically like a tube, right? Okay, so that's flat. Now you need two sticks or pens or whatever. I want to go around real quick down here and find two things that I can use really quick. Should have done that before, Joe. Come on. We're going to take the, the eye part and you're going to just run your stick or your Sharpie marker through that, right? And then you're going to put it on the ground in between your feet. You see that? You got that secured, just so it doesn't go anywhere, right? That's all that you're really doing now. And you're gonna take your pen or your stick or whatever, and if you have a spool, a spool of wire, I would slide the spool down right there, okay? But if you don't, that's fine too. You can just take your hand and start twisting. And you're just gonna twist and twist and twist and twist and twist and twist like you did last summer. Twist in time is here. Do you remember when things were really humming? Oh, okay, I'll stop. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna twist a bunch and you're gonna create a very strong braid. Something that's never going to just break or come undone. It's probably stronger than two times as strong as the one strand. This is also what Terry was saying. Don't quote me on that. So you're gonna let go. There's gonna be a little bit of backlash. Not too bad. Look at it, and it could use a little bit more twisting. So I'm just going to sit here and twist. It's not the most comfortable thing on the hand, but it's not a big deal. Again, if you had the spool, it'd be uh, all the difference in the world. And, and snare wire usually does come on a spool. This is craft wire again, right? All right, let's look at that. Yeah, that looks pretty solid. Okay. Slide that guy out, slide that guy out. All right, so you can see exactly what we've got. This is exactly what we wanted and need. We have a good braid down here. It's actually really good down here. It gets a little loose in the middle and then really good down there again. It's fine, it's super strong. It's exactly what we wanted. So this is gonna be an awesome bail for, uh, for the pot. <clears throat> so this is the bail, obviously. Made it just a little bit bigger than around so that when it's time to pack it down, you can tuck it inside if you don't have an allergy or whatever. Eat pretty easily. So that's all fine. And then you just need to take a, a, another piece of, of wire, the same size as this, and, and hook it up underneath this lip. And I'll show you that right now. So again, can you hear Autumn upstairs? <laughs> You're going to take a piece of wire, the exact length you need, maybe a, a centimeter or two, a centimeter or two longer. You guys use centimeters, right? Over in the States? For sure. Okay, so see there's a little bit of overlap. I do want a little bit of overlap, so we're going to go right to, say, there. I'll twist it over on itself again. Break it, nice and easy. All right, so this this is the lip I was talking about underneath, right? Obviously. So once you get it up un underneath there, pretty good. It's gonna be solid, but you don't want to put it on just yet because you got to get the bail on, obviously. So you're taking your bail that you made and you're attaching it to either side. I'm sorry, to either side of that wire. It's a little, little jankety here, one second. All right, so it's on the wire. 
and you don't have to worry about the placement. You can you can play, uh, mess with the placement after. You really just got to get under here and get it tight. I might even do that one again. I might go try to grab my 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 multi-tool. Oh no, we got it. We got it. The only thing is these little sharp pieces after you can fold down if you if you can't cut them off, you'll just have to fold them down under. There, that's not bad. Alright, that's not gonna get uh, caught on anything or anything like that. So, look at that. A ba bam son. It's not perfect. You know what I mean? And the, the previous one I had wasn't perfect either. But they definitely do the job. Look at that. Okay, so we're basically done that part of it. You can just pop your handles back on if you want to. And the handles are nice because they fold in too, making it even more nesting, nesting cup. So all you would do now is you would whip up a little pot hanger, which I have plenty of um, videos showing you how to do that. Hang that on there. Obviously mess around with the, the, the um, spacing and stuff. Then the lid goes on. Ah. So I want to talk about the lid too. There's a specific thing for you guys in the States. So in Canada here, we don't have the same sized coffee, ground coffee cans as you. In, in the States, there's a 12 ounce coffee can. It's kind of tall, cylindrical, and the top or the bottom from it fits perfectly on these Sierra nesting cups. Like I'm talking like, look at this one. It's just off. Like I can push it on and it pops off, it pops off again. It still works. Like, believe me, it still works to keep the ash out. It still works to keep, there you go. Still works to keep the ash out, still works to keep um, the heat in. You know what I mean? It's just not as snug and popped on as I would like. Right now it's okay. Yeah. So, here's the thing. We don't have that size in Canada or I couldn't find that size freaking six years ago when I made this. Um, all this is, is like, you take the you take the can opener and you open it sideways. Instead of putting the can opener on top of the can of soup or whatever you're doing, you know what I mean, doing it normally that way, you turn the can on its side and you cut here so you leave the lip, right? You cut it on its side so you leave the lip and then it'll pop right on like it's supposed to and then have a good suction. Again, I couldn't find it in Canada, but I know in the States you guys do have it because that's where I learned it from. All this is is three holes po uh, punched in drilled in, whatever, to have the steam escape. And this is a little tack weld, a little sheet metal tack weld with like a little like um, copper wire bent over top of it to pick it up. I've made these as simple as drill a hole through it and put a screw in it and leave the screw sticking out. And that's that's what I use for the lid to take off. You don't need the holes. I can You can use a piece of wood even. It's, it's no big deal. Really, this is no big deal. You don't even need a lid half the times, but it's nice. People like to keep the ashes out of their water. And, and, and speed up the cooking. So you can make a better lid than I have, one that actually sit, sits snug on it, but that's really, making the bale makes the cup into an actual cook kit. Like when you don't wanna actually have to sit your cook kit right on the coals or bring a grill, you know what I mean? You can make a, a, a pot hanger like that. And you got, again, you guys have seen me do that. Maybe I'll try to link a, a, a a video but super easy thing to make and then you can use these for snares too right you can fold them over and now they're stronger you flip this through this now this double or triple this the, the strength of a real snare right it's going through there and tightening up but I would highly suggest check out Iowa Woodsman's YouTube channel IA Woodsman um, super cool dude legit dude been around forever uh, former SEER instructor, my personal mentor, friend, um, yeah, good guy, all around good guy, so, I hope you guys are having a good day, I hope you enjoyed this, I hope this was, was useful to you, right, I like this, I was super happy when I made this, like, this was like, yeah, man, like, I, I made some of my own kit, like, back, like, 
people people get a misconception that they th they see that I have the, all this nice gear and this quality stuff, and it's like I didn't start out that way, man. Not by a long shot. I was a Walmart guy. I was a Canadian Tire guy. And for you guys in the states, again, like a Menard, like the cheapest gear you could find, JanSport backpack. This is what I rocked for years. That's why, like, that's I can't even get that black off. I can get it off in some spots. This is legit what I used. You know what I mean? So it's like. I started off that way for years and I, I accrued gear every year by asking for gear for my birthday and for Christmas. We were not well to, well to do at all, we poor, poor our whole lives. My whole family or both the sides, Will's side and my side would sometimes pitch in for a certain piece of gear, like a sleeping bag for me, a $500 sleeping bag for my birthday. You know what I mean? That's how I accrued gear after. And then now it's my job and it's easy, I'm, I'm, I, I, can, I get things for free and I can justify buying things because it's a write off and it's for my job. It's like you buying tools for your job, right? It's the same exact thing. Anyways, I started off this way and there's nothing wrong with this and this works totally fine and there's more connection to you and your gear when you do it this way. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll be back with a real video, a camping video soon. Uh, they took away the crown land on me. They took away the public, or sorry, the, the, the parks. They took away fires, but I still have private land I can camp on. So we'll be doing that and we'll, we'll have an alternate to a fire. And um, yeah, see you guys soon. Thank you very much. Go make this. Show me, tag me in a video. If you, if you have a YouTube channel, make this and tag me in it. If you have an Instagram account, make this and tag me and I wanna see it. Have a good day guys. Oh, almost forgot. Did you guys check out my new shirt? Toilet paper free since 2010. Go check out bunkerbranding.com. And under influencers, Joe Robinette, there's a ton of new merchandise. This is the newest one. I thought it was quite clever. I like it. Thanks, guys.